Hey, what's up guys? This is Guy here with KB Trainings. Today I'm going to tell you about my experience with the Cisco CCNA 200-301. I'm shooting this on Sunday, October 3rd, 2021, and it's one o'clock where I am now. So yesterday on um, Saturday, October 2nd, I took the CCNA exam and I'm going to tell you exactly why I took the exam in the first part of this video. And the second part, I will discuss the types of questions that I found. In the third part, I'll tell you some of my surprises when I saw the exam, some of the questions that were not expected that I found there. And then I will give you some tips and tricks on how to prepare and pass this exam. So first of all, why did I take the exam? I, I actually didn't have any plan to take it. When I woke up in the morning, I didn't know that I would be taking the exam at the end of the day. So I just woke up. I knew that I had to create a lesson for my course. I have a CCNA course that I'm creating on cablechains.com. And for every lesson in the course, I put the same level of dedication, same level of research and understanding and explanation so that you'll be able to know exactly the topic we're talking about. So lessons go from 20 to 30 minutes and it's been almost a year since I started creating these lessons. So these are master lessons and this is a master course where if you follow it from the beginning to the end, you really know what you're talking about and you won't have any problem at the CCNA. So I had to create a lesson on wireless LAN controllers and um, lightweight access point. And I didn't know how deep I had to go with the configuration of the lightweight access point and the wireless LAN controller. I didn't know how far Cisco wanted us to go. I was like, yeah, let me just take the, the exam and I'll see what it looks like. And I can know exactly how deep I have to go with these configurations. So I went online and I scheduled the exam for the same day. It was almost two o'clock, uh, 2 p.m. And I scheduled the exam for 7 p.m. yesterday evening. And I took it, it was fine. It was a good experience actually. I had a lady on the other end. Um, she actually called me after I sent her the pictures of the room where I was supposed to take the exam. She called me and asked me about a pen that she saw on the table. Um, and I had a pen on the table when I took the picture, but I already removed the pen. So I just turned my laptop and showed her the room and uh, she, she made sure that there was nothing on my desk and then I started the exam. So it was, it was good. Um, I had 101 questions for 120 minutes, which is two hours. So it was good. And I finished and had almost 40 minutes left. There was no surprise when I passed the exam because these are things that I know very well. And I did my first CCNA in 2016. And since then, I also passed the CCNA security and the CCNA service provider, which are obsolete now because all of them are encapsulated in a single CCNA. I also have the CCNP and all of that. So it was good, the exam was fine. And now I'm going to tell you the types of questions that I found at the exam. Of course, I'm not going to give you the exact questions because I'm not supposed to do that. Ethically and professionally, it's not correct because the value of this exam resides in the complexity of the exam and the amount of work that it takes for you to get it. So if everybody's out there just spreading all the questions, there is a loss. There is a loss in the value of the exam. And uh, I I've talked about it in one of my first videos on this channel where I was talking about the tips to get the CCNA and so on. So you're not supposed to do that. If you want to get the exam, put yourself to study study a lot, do your labs and be prepared for it, you're going to be fine. So there's no need for you to know the exact questions. What I'm going to give you here is the types of questions. First of all, we had, I mean, I saw multi-choice questions. So you have a single question with uh, different answers and you need to pick the best one or you need to pick, uh, to pick the two correct answers. If it's just one answer, you're going to see a radio button. And if it's two answers, you're going to see uh, a check button. And mostly it was about uh, spotting the difference between two technologies or talking about a certain definition of a certain concept. That can be very tricky if you are not well prepared because those assertions that you have or those answers can look alike. They can have just a very small difference between them and you need to be well prepared to be able to spot the difference and to know which one is the best. The second type of questions uh, were a drag and drop. So you have a list of items to the left and items to the right and you need to match them depending on how they fit. And then sometimes they'll show you a configuration they run a show command and show you the configuration and ask you what is the command necessary to reach that state of configuration. So what do you need to type in your, um, in your CLI to get the result that is on the screen? And they give you a list of commands. You need to pick the, the best one. That's why I'm saying you need to be well prepared. You need to do your labs a lot so that you know what brings you what or what commands bring you 
this show command and you'll be able to spot what's best for that. And the next type is that they show you the config and they ask you what's wrong with that configuration. It may be from two different routers. They show you router one and router two and ask you why these two routers are not able to communicate, why they cannot uh, form an, an OSPF uh, relation, for example. You need to know exactly what's going on and what's misconfigured. And then the, they'll show the configuration and ask you a behavior or the behavior of a certain device. They'll say, hey, given this configuration here, what would be this router doing? So you need to know exactly from this config, this router should be doing this or that. Or if this link failed, this other link can be uh, taken over. So you need to know that from the show command. Sometimes they'll show you a topology and ask you the commands you need to reach a certain state in that topology or to create some connections. So actually, you don't go in a CLI, but they give you uh, an image of a CLI and they ask you the commands that you need to get there. And uh, some other time they show you the topology and ask you what would happen if a change was made. And they'll give you um, this uh, the specific change and they ask you, okay, if we do this, what would happen in this topology here? And you'll be able to look at the different answers and say exactly what is going to happen. So those are the types of questions that I found. I may have forgotten some other ones, but this is primarily what I saw. And for surprises, first of all, VTP. The VLAN trunk and protocol is not listed in the exam blueprint, but it was at the exam. I had a single question on it. And it's something that I covered in my course, but I didn't actually go in depth. And now I feel like I have to create a lesson on VTP so that you are prepared when you watch the lesson to take the exam well and not be surprised. And then um, I had EIGRP. Of course, the level of EIGRP that I had at the exam was not uh, advanced, just like I had with OSPF version two, for example. I had a lot of questions on OSPF, but I also had some questions on EIGRP, the kind of basic questions that you should know when you watch the lesson on routing protocols. So, of course, they're asking us in a CCNA to know about routing protocols. We don't go in depth in all the routing protocols, but at least we need to know the basic on BGP, EIGRP, OSPF, RIP, and so on. So we need to know the basic information. So I had those kind of questions as well. That's for the surprises. And the last part of this video, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to take the exam and pass it. First of all, of course, you need to be well prepared. Well prepared means that you are not bound or limited by the time, but you are limited by the knowledge. You move to the next step when you master the step where you are. That's why when I create those lessons, and I told you there are big lessons, 20 to 30 minutes on a certain topic. So when you watch it, you can just move on. You need to do your labs. You need to know exactly what's going on. You need to understand it before moving on because that's how you will be good at the exam and not even the exam, your career. You're going to be the kind of engineer that knows exactly what he's talking about and brings value to the team instead of hiding behind other people and trying just to do things your way, which is the wrong way. But you should be the kind of engineer that's able to challenge his colleagues, that's able to bring some input to the discussion, to the meeting. So you should be that. And you're going to reach that level by studying well, doing your labs, doing your, your own configurations, creating your own topologies and studying well. That's how you master. For someone who doesn't know, the exam is not easy. It's complex because there's a lot of information to digest and to understand. So you should take your time. I am surprised sometimes when I see people talking about passing or taking the CCNA in six weeks and those kind of things. Maybe if you had some previous experience, that's fine. Or if you know what you're doing, just like me, I just took the exam. I didn't actually study for it. Of course, I mean, I'm, I'm studying when I'm creating my course, but it's something that I was not expecting. So I just took, the, uh, just took it the same day, unless you are that kind of professional. But if you're not, you should take your time to prepare for it. It may take months. It may take a year or even two because you need to know what you're doing. When you are actually doing the exam, you need to use these three things. First of all, you need the knowledge that you acquired during your, your learning process. So you need the, the knowledge. And if you recognize the question and you know that you know it, just grab the correct answer and you move on. All the six months that you spent, you have to have something good enough to respond to most of the questions at the exam. Second, you can use also common sense because not all the questions are very clear. Some questions are confusing. So you do your best and you go through the answers and you see which one might be the best and you just pick that one. 
Um, and you can do that by eliminating the wrong answers because some answers are just wrong. And if your knowledge is good enough, you can spot the wrong answer among those four or five uh, answers that you have. You, you can say, oh, no, this one is just so bad, it's so wrong. You put it on the side and then you might eliminate those and stay with maybe two answers. And then you, you pick what's the best. And the third one is just you take chances. If you have no idea on the question, you just pick whatever looks good to you and you move to the next question instead of wasting your time on that question where you can actually have answers to many other questions after that. So that's all I can say about the, the, the exam. But the main thing that you need to take away here is that take your time to prepare, take your time to read, to understand, to practice. If you do that, you don't need to have dumps. You don't need to smoke whatever. You're going to be okay at the exam and you will pass your CCNA. Thank you for watching guys. And if you have any question, any comment, you can leave it in the comment section. And uh, don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. That's where I post some of my behind the scenes and some of my projects as well. Thank you for watching this video and take care. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.